Forum BX257 here again with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review and today I'll be taking a look at the 1984 self-propelled cannon better known by the baseball nickname Slugger with its driver Thunder. The Slugger is actually a medium-sized vehicle despite its massive cannon it's almost nine inches long and quite frankly bigger than the actual vehicle itself. It comes with six rolling wheels, an opening engine cover which is actually hinged so it doesn't come completely off. A, a nice feature that I wish more vehicles had. It has an independent uh, turning personnel machine gun which can come completely off so the, uh, the figure can hold it unfortunately without the without a actual locking peg it can get uh, easily lost it's and it's right in front of the hatch for easy driver access to hold it the hatch itself just kind of swivels off here it doesn't it doesn't raise or complete come completely off and it's held in place by this little pin here which unfortunately is kind of easy to just pop right off and uh, you get that lost you might even get the hatch lost as a result the cannon only goes uh, up and down and for added play value while firing the massive cannon or Neo Armstrong Cyclone Jet Armstrong Cannon, as I like to refer to it now. You can deploy this rear shovel stabilizer, which gives you a real sense of the massive recoil this gun would give. This looker came with a driver, or self-propelled gun artilleryman, called Thunder. Now Thunder came with quite a few accessories, or rather just two, but one accessory which is rather complex, and that's his helmet. It's a standard helmet, but with these headsets attached to it, and through the headsets, a blast visor. all of which can sort of move independently on, on its uh, peg holes up and down. Another thing he came with is this monocular. So probably so he could range his shots. Now the slugger's seating arrangement was very unique. It may be a little hard to see, but there's a very short seat in there. But the thing goes all the way in, so you can actually sit him on that first seat, and he'll he'll sit relatively high up out of the canopy. But if you sit him in further, he'll go all the way in. I'll just demonstrate that right now. I've also taken off his monocular because that sort of sticks out uh, despite the the angle on the strap it's uh, it's still a relatively uh, hard plastic and sticks out on an angle and here's what he looks like I'll put the personal gun there sitting on that first ledge but then you twist them in a little bit you can sit all the way in okay well his head is still sticking out a little bit but if you just sort of press him in just a tiny bit he goes all the way in but he's not like lost in there you can still pull him out relatively easily uh, speaking of the gun this is a very clever reuse of a previous mold. Ironically, I'll bring in Gung Ho here. 
Well, we can take a look at Gung Ho's grenade launcher. And compare it to the machine gun. It's a nice little addition to a mold and quite frankly, it almost looks better to me as a machine gun than it does as Gung Ho's original grenade launcher. And by the way, I do say ironic because when this was re-released in 1997, they used Gung Ho as a driver instead of Thunder. Many people consider the Slugger to be based on the actual M109 self-propelled cannon, but it doesn't really look like that to me. I believe the idea of the Slugger was based on that self-propelled cannon, but the looks are really more like a armored car with a giant howitzer stuck to its side. It's still a very realistic looking design, so I can't fault it for that. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, Hasbro was releasing some of its older vehicles, and one of those vehicles was the Slugger. Now, they apparently ran out of the original Slugger, and it just looks almost exactly the way it does uh, as the retail version. However, as you can see here, this is the retail instruction sheet, and for all the mailaways, they have a they put this additional bit bit of text here. However, the vehicle itself became a variant after that point, and they decided to drop the camouflage for some reason. Now, whether this is some foreign version uh, surplus, which Hasbro brought back, kind of like the, the Ferret and certain other vehicles, this one doesn't uh, say made in Brazil or made in Argentina or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure why this uh, doesn't have any camouflage on it. I can't even find a foreign version without the camouflage. One of the most distinctive things about the Slugger was that it had the camouflage on it. And this isn't just a, a version without the camouflage painted on it. The actual plastic is is quite different. Like the, the base is, is quite different. It's almost more of a duller olive tone rather than the bright tone of the original. However, everything else is the same. I would say that the mail away version without the camouflage is probably a lot easier to find in the United States than anywhere else in the world. As a matter of fact, uh, most, even the variants of the mail order vehicles, uh, like the Ferret for instance with the bright blue, that was even available in Canada. But I can find no evidence of the uh, non-camouflage slugger being available in Canada. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews.
Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.